Today on Locked On Red Wings, is Detroit the saddest team in the NHL? Your Locked On Red Wings, your daily podcast on the Detroit Red Wings. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to the Locked On Red Wings podcast. We are your hosts, Brian Fisher and Scotty Bentley. I'm a podcast producer for the Daily J, a WWJ news radio podcast. Well, Scotty's a freelance journalist for the Detroit News, as well as the host of Locked On Tigers. And we got a lot to get to in today's episode. Uh, the emergency recall of Matt Luff is the first thing we'll lead off with. And then second, we'll talk about whether or not the Red Wings are the saddest team in the NHL. And we'll explain what we mean by that when we get there. And then in segment three, We'll do a game preview of the matchup in Nashville, Bridgestone Arena against the Predators. But yeah, back to Scotty. Well, first of all, Scotty, how are you on this fine? We're recording on a Monday evening. But how are you doing? Pretty good, man. I I, I, it, I could cry of happiness thinking about the fact that the sun doesn't set until 730 tonight. That's a win. This is uh, to the people who complain about losing one hour of sleep in one random day in March, but the it's not dark at 4 p.m. I, I don't know what to tell you. I will never agree or understand with that logic. This is the best thing ever, uh, and I'm pretty pumped about it. The Tigers also signed, uh, if you're watching the World Baseball Classic, there's like this 21-year-old kid from Nicaragua that struck out three of the best players on the planet, and the Tigers just signed him right afterwards, and it was – sweet and like the fact that we're part of that story is like kind of cool so all right well now that scotty's put everyone to sleep with baseball talk we can get into the episode that's uh, great <laughs> i love you scotty um <laughs> you too buddy so the red wings recalled on an emergency basis matt Loff from the grand rapids griffins uh before we get into the possible whys as to the emergency recall occurred because we still don't know why <laughs> that's an emergency basis uh, Matt Luff in his last 10 games with the Grand Rapids Griffins is three goals, six assists. If you want to go to 11, he's got four goals and six assists. He has been ineffective in the AHL. We saw him earlier in the season. Honestly, have a in a limited amount of time we've seen Matt Luff at the Detroit Red Wings, I have a huge soft spot for him already. Uh, he has like this edge to his game. He knows he knows he's his a, role. He's a dog, Brian. He's a dog. He's a well, dog. All those guys are dogs, right? Because they, they know that they're, they're grinders, bottom, man. Yeah. They, they're trying to make an NHL roster. They don't want to stay in the AHL. And so they go out there and they give it their all. And in his short, limited amount of time with the Red Wings before he got just blasted in the face and then broke his arm. Yeah. You know, he gave it all on the ice and he scored a couple of goals. I was loving me some Luff action, you know? But then Maddie unfortunately, Luff, baby. No, I'm pumped. I'm pumped. He literally, back. he literally shattered into a million pieces. And so, correct. And then everyone yeah. else got healthy before he got healthy, and then he went back down to the Grand Rapids. Yeah, no, I mean, you know, it, it was uh, – he's got a two-way, right? So, like, this was always kind of the – I'm not sure. I'd have to double-check. Let me double-check on that. Regardless, but, yeah. it, it's it's a uh, – he's a really nice depth piece that we talked about over the offseason. And, yeah, I'm, I'm happy for Matt Luff. I'm I'm happy for him. That 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 is a dog. That's the dog, and uh, I hope that he can uh, he can kind of find some production at the NHL level too. Because as you've pointed out, he's actually been producing at a pretty darn good clip there in Grand Rapids. So, uh, let's see. Well, he's an RFA man. I cannot believe he's only 25 years old. For some reason, I had in my head that he was way older than that. But from what I can tell, it was yeah, it, it is an NHL level contract. Respect it's league minimum. Um, I believe, oh, maybe not. I get to see, did, I'm on, I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry to our <laughs> listeners for not knowing this offhand. I do apologize. Oh. Uh, Matt Luff signed a one-year $750,000 contract with the Detroit Red Wings. Cap, cap hit of seven hundred fifty. That's the league minimum. Qualifying offer, minimum guaranteed salary, 400000 So maybe it was a two-way contract. But again, regardless, oh, yeah, because he has a minor's salary. So, yes, it had to have been a two-way contract. Um, with the Detroit Red Wing. Regardless, I'm happy for Matt Luff to getting called up, but as to the why that it's an emergency basis. Yeah, that's, this is where it gets weird. Because, yeah. I mean, we're recording this at 6, it's currently 6.37 p.m. on Monday, March 13th. We have no idea. 
Yeah. I, I mean, like the you know, emergency recall would would point to like an, an injury that is obviously an emergency and like just happened and they need to fill that roster spot right away. But no one seems to know of any injury that happened during the back-to-back against Boston. Larkin went into the tunnel for a second, but he came back out and like played well. So I, 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 I don't know. I, I there's, there's really, it's not, um, it's not fabs because they already addressed that. It, it's, it's weird. I, no one really knows. Well, the w- weird thing is, is the Red Wings have interesting. Zarnik is on an emergency recall too. I did not rec- realize that. So both of those guys are on emergency recall if cap friendly is correct. So it just, if, if Zarnik was called up to address the fabric, it makes you wonder if maybe there's another injury that has taken place that we don't know about. And it's going to be a day to day thing. Cause that's usually what you would use an emergency recall for is just like somebody who possibly might miss a starter that we just saw with Alexander and Delkovich. They Vili Huso missed one game. And so they emergency recalled uh, Alex Nadelkovich. Right. So, you know, you wonder uh, who's injured. And I know there's some speculation because Larkin went down the tunnel at one point during the Red Wings game on Sunday, if whether or not Larkin is the injured player, uh, quote unquote, but he also then came back and scored a goal in the power play and looked fine. Yeah. And he also, he also tends to go down the tunnel quite a bit also during true. hockey games. So it's it's hard to exactly tell who is uh who's the who's the emergency recall for um or maybe it's just could it possibly be that they just did it because they could? I don't, maybe <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> yeah, I mean at this point your guess is as good as mine, brother. I don't, I don't know. I really don't. I they you know if you have a roster spot you can, but I I don't know why we're we're throwing the emergency label on there. Then I don't know. It's 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 weird. Yeah, I, I'm I honestly have no idea. And in the end, hey, I'm happy to see some more Matt Love hockey. I I, uh, I root for him every single time he's on the ice, and I hope he scores some goals for the Red Wings on oh. a way to a win over the Nashville Predators. But first. Yeah, let's see here. When a team is short players by reason of inca- incapacitating injury or illness by a league suspension to its players. Now, that's something we didn't consider. Somebody getting suspended? Mm. I don't <laughs> think so. Nobody did anything dirty. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> just just because the, the league likes to spit on the Detroit Red Wings when it comes to yeah, fair uh, officiating. But, yes, that I have no idea. I have no idea why they would do an emergency recall unless there was an, um, an emergency injury. So... Uh, Let's just leave it at that because I yeah. there's no idea. Who knows? Let's move on to the second topic, the main topic. Uh, we'll set it up, I guess, here, and then we'll go to a quick break, and then we'll get into it. But Micah Blake McCurdy of Ineffective Math, also the guy who runs Hockey Viz, posted this graphic. And for those who are listening, I will break it down. But first, I want to get it up. And he calls it the sadness graph. I'll zoom in for you guys as well. And what, okay, well, it just readjusted and made it small again, but that's cool. And what the sadness graph is, is it's the chance of missing playoffs and not picking in the top five, including lotteries and trades. Now, this was entering March 9th. This is before the weekend, so it may have shifted. But after beating the Boston Bruins in that split, and I think also this includes, does not include the Chicago Blackhawks victory, you have to imagine to be higher. The Red Wings currently have a 90% chance of finishing outside the top five and missing the playoffs, currently leading the NHL as the most sad team in the NHL. So this graph just basically implies that the saddest team in the NHL is the most middling team in the (laughs) NHL. The guys who weren't good enough to make the playoffs but weren't bad enough to pick top five. And when we come back, we'll discuss whether or not being sad is something to be sad about. But first, I got to talk to you guys today about FanDuel. It's the midway point of the NBA and NHL season, and now is the perfect time to download the FanDuel app, America's number one sportsbook, because new customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Then you can bet on everything from the money line 
to point scores and threes drain. You know, I not NBA, but I did bet on some point scores in the NHL. And there's only three games happening on today, which is Monday the 13th, 313 day. By the way, I should have worn my 313 hat. I missed I missed the opportunity on that. But I took Tage Thompson anytime score with the Buffalo Sabres tonight, playing the Toronto Maple Leafs. Tage and plus crazy. Odds. Yeah. And it's crazy. The Maple Leafs goaltending is, you know, it's not bad, but it ain't great either. And Tage Thompson is a freak. So plus odds, Tage Thompson, anytime goal scorer. I took it without a doubt. We'll see. By the time you guys listen to this, you'll probably know the answer to this. I don't. And it's not going to hit. <laughs> I don't think the Ducks one hit the other day, right? It went to overtime and they lost. No. Oh, Your bets don't hit, Brian. <laughs> listen, I got a winning record, all right? The only the ones that we For don't sure. know about that I talk about on here. Oh, 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 of course. <laughs> yeah, guys, guys, guys. The ones that he doesn't talk about publicly, those ones all <laughs> We only get the bad ones. Yeah. Yeah. So head to FanDuel. And even let you, they even let you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout payout with a same game parlay. So don't miss the chance to get a no sweat first bet. Up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to FanDuel.com slash Lockdown. That's FanDuel.com slash Lockdown to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. Segment two, Lockdown Red Wings podcast. I do usually win the majority yeah, of them. Sure. Like the other night when no, we no, didn't. I'm, like no, we all no, believe no, you. No, no, no. No, like, no, no. All you. Let's stop. The other night when we were talking, I had placed three bets. And yep. two of them I had already hit on. Oh. It was just the one that we yeah, didn't know. I talked about them on the podcast. It was just the one that was still up in the air. It's when right. they're up in the air I tend to lose For when sure. I talk about them. So, I'm, of course. No, yeah, we all we all believe that. All right. Scott is getting fired. <laughs> he's, he's done. He's, he's gone. <laughs> that would make some people happy, probably. <laughs> make me happy. Trying to get some peace and quiet on this dang podcast. So let me throw up this graph back in. I, I set set it up before the break, Scotty. And the Red Wings are currently the saddest team in the NHL with a 90% chance of finishing outside the playoffs and one percent and outside the top five in draft order. And my first question is to you, Scotty. Are you necessarily sad about being sad? <laughs> you know, I, I Given the criteria, it definitely it, it it makes sense why we are here. Um, th this is a Red Wings team that uh, essentially where we stand right now, there is zero hope for the postseason. That's pretty much guaranteed not happening. And there's also pretty much zero hope for like a tankathon, you know, like make a run at Bedard type of thing. Like that's also even, even a top three pick is like not happening. Right. Mm -hmm. So it, 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 given the criteria, it does make a lot of sense. Am I sad about being sad? Absolutely not. And the reason for that is because I, we, we, predicted this this like we this is what we wanted like this is literally what Brian and I wanted going into the season we we were like hey we we want to be one of the better teams to miss the postseason i think that would be a huge step in the right direction this year and then next year if they miss the playoffs then it's it's time to start having a a, a more like deeper kind of philosophical conversation about what we're doing here but this year i, I don't think playoffs was was ever should have been a, a legitimate expectation for this fan base and I also don't think even like yes Bedard is is you know hyped up to be generational like it's it's uh, obviously that would be a huge get for whichever organization is going to land him but I, I, I don't think I, I I had this conversation a lot with your mom Wow, that was crazy. <laughs> no, um, that was that was just absolutely insane moment right there. But uh, <laughs> respect, honestly. Um, this was a, a conversation I've had with a lot of people throughout um, the the Tigers rebuild, as well as kind of just like all the fan bases rebuild. Is like a rebuild is not you are the worst team in hockey for like five years, and then you just magically are in the playoffs. That's not how it works. You don't just get to 
to, to try to be as bad as possible and tank as hard as possible and have the worst record in the league for, for three, four years in a row. And then boom, now we're, you, you know, like a, a 14 seed. That's like not how any rebuild ever has worked. It's a, it, it's a trajectory thing. And like where we're at, it just, it didn't make sense to curve back down in tank, but they also aren't at, at the point of the postseason. And so I, I'm after game 82, we're, we're probably going to talk about this season and I'm going to come on this show and say, this is a successful year. And uh, I, so no, I, I'm not sad about being sad, I guess, long, long version short. No, I, I agree with you. And I'm happy to be sad on this graph right. because <laughs> it, what this graph screams to me is growth. This graph screams you've improved year over year, and they have. As much as the, there were parts of the season where the team struggled and they were frustrating, there were parts of the season where they were winning inexplicably and making a run at the playoffs, and then they uh, lost six straight, and now they're back to win-loss, win-loss. They're inconsistent for sure. Um, but regardless of that, the team has shown growth, and you know that growth comes with a cost. And the cost in this case is finishing outside the top five and finishing outside the playoffs. Like you said, Scotty, and we've said this so many times throughout the season, this is where we wanted the Red Wings to be because we thought a successful step forward year was going to be sitting right outside the playoffs. And they were in the conversation. They weren't even in the conversation. They were literally in a playoff spot late February. Yeah, before the, like a week before the trade deadline, yeah. Before the wheels came off for like six straight games and right. we had to sell. But that's a massive improvement. Like it's March and they're still it's March 13th and they're technically not even out of the race. They're like eight points out, which is out. But if they go on a run, I'm not expecting them to, but if they go on a run, they could very right. well, you know, be there. So when I see that they're they're ranked the having the best odds at being the saddest team in the NHL. I look at that and I look at that as a success. It means you took a step forward this season without a doubt, because again, to your credit, no team goes from top five pick Stanley cup final. It's very right. rare. It does happen, but that's the exception, not the rule. Most rebuilds go through this phase. Now what happens next is it's okay to be in this zone for like one, maybe two years. But after that, you don't want to be what the Carolina Hurricanes and Minnesota Wild were for the better part of like a decade where they were stuck in the sadness. In zone. our own city, the yeah. Detroit Pistons were the definition of, of this, right? The, the, for like 12 years, the Pistons were one of the best teams to miss the playoffs every year. And they were the most Ill irrelevant franchise in sports. Love them to death. Like, like genuinely, they, 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 they never had a, a top five, six pick and, until Cade happened like that, that really broke the spell there. So we've even seen it in, in, in our own city limits. And yeah, like th this, to your point, like the, the next part, and we kind of talked about this after the trade deadline too, for me, every single rebuild is, is like make or break time is right where we are at this upcoming off season, I think is the most important off season in the last, uh, I mean, take your pick, seven years of Detroit Red Wings hockey. Like, th this is this is vital. So many rebuilds that you, you plummet, you bottom out, you start coming back up, and then you hit a point where you either continue to climb and you break through and you take that next step and you're a playoff team, or you go back down and you have rebuild 2.0. And I, I think that we are exactly at that spot where – one of two things is going to happen. And, and so I, it is, you know, I don't know, like anxiety invoking, like it is a little bit stressful to think about the future, but uh, does it, does it make me sad about this season? Absolutely not. It, it just, this is, this is really like a key point in the rebuild. And I think that we're exactly where we're supposed to be. I completely agree. This is, I think it's okay to do this for a year or two, but you don't want this team to plateau and get stuck here. This is the point, and we've mentioned this on previous episodes, but this is kind of like a rebuild's critical point. You know, yeah. this is where frustrations begin to boil. This is, I mean, our frustrations boiled earlier and probably a little bit too soon, if I'm being honest, at least with me, my frustrations boiled. I don't want to speak for you, where I just wanted the team to start winning and it just, they, they weren't built for it. 
as for sustained success yet. I mean, yeah. this is the part where Steve Eisman has got to do the hardest thing and that's build a winner. He's got his guys in the system. We have barely seen any of those guys yet, but he's got to get guys here. Now he's got to get guys to the Detroit city playing out a little Caesars arena and break them through this ceiling, this glass ceiling, so to speak, to get them from, you know, your, your ninth, 10th, 11th best team in the uh, conference to your, I mean, first, you know, shoot for wild card and then move on to the divisional. Right. You got to break through <clears throat> to become one of the better teams in the conference. And right now they're just like on they're They're on the cusp of that, but they're just missing a few pieces. But that's the, it's that critical mass moment of the rebuild. The, the best way I, I think I can articulate it is anybody can lose on purpose. Yes. Anyone. Can well, harder to win purpose. on purpose. <laughs> right. So the bottoming out part of the rebuild, anyone can do. Now you want to get good value for the pieces you trade away, obviously. And Iserman, I think most people have been pretty pleased with the value he's gotten in a lot of the trades. But anyone can can strip a team down and lose intentionally. Where rubber meets the road is at this point where you're starting the upswing and can you take them to the next level and and make a winner? Absolutely. Uh, so when we come back, we're going to break down the game preview against the Nashville Predators, the second of two matchups between the two teams. So stay tuned to Lockdown Red Wings. But first, I got to talk to you guys today about none other than AG1. Our next partner is a product you got to use literally every day. Start taking Athletic Greens because with one delicious scoop of AG1, you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food sourced superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogen to help you start your day right. The special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy recovery, focus, and aging, all those things. It's lifestyle friendly, whether you eat keto, paleo, vegan, dairy-free, or gluten-free, and contains less than one gram of sugar. It's got no GMOs, no nasty chemicals, or artificial anything while still tasting good, and it supports better sleep quality and recovery, supports mental clarity and alertness. It's the one thing with the best things. Athletic Greens uses the best of the best products on the latest science with constant product iterations and third-party testing, and it has over 7,000 five-star reviews to back up all those bold claims. So right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop and a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different supplements or pills to look out for your health. So make it easy. Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network to take ownership over your health and pick up the daily ultimate daily nutritional insurance segment three lockdown red wings podcast almost at segment two trying to go back in time that's how much i love talking to you scotty i want to drag it out as much as possible buddy remember like 10 minutes ago when you said you hated me and you wanted to fire me i'm bipolar that was a fun time <laughs> so yeah, everyone knows i'm kidding everyone knows i love you <laughs> The Red Wings play the Nashville Predators tonight by the time you're listening to this. 8 o'clock at Bridgestone Arena in Nashville. Been to Bridgestone, by the way. Uh, during, not during the season. I visited Nashville for a summer vacation. Bridgestone is a really nice arena. Nice place to watch a hockey game. I, I do have a Carhartt Nashville Predators hat that I am not allowed to wear on this podcast anymore after a <laughs> former host got into a Twitter fight with Nashville, and so we all have to permanently hate. <laughs> I don't I don't like Nashville. I'm just, just an so NHL fan. Funny. <laughs> that night. That was, yeah, that was a wild evening. Nobody cares when I wear the Vegas hat, but as soon as I wear the Predators hat, it's like, Brian, take that off. It's like, oh, guys, <laughs> I'm just a hockey fan. I like to collect hockey hats, but I'm not allowed to wear that one anymore. Not allowed. Correct. Thanks, Nolan. Uh, <laughs> it is time, Nolan's fault. <laughs> it is Nolan's fault. Last time these two teams played, uh, the Red Wings shut them out three to nothing, and I had to go solo because Scotty ditched me for some one, one reason or the other. I can't remember what you were doing that night. Uh, but I went solo after a three nothing win. That was in the early in the season, and the Red Wings were clicking, and Billy Husso carried Detroit, and they were third in the division at that point. Well, times have changed. Uh, Predators are fifth in the Central, 33, 24, and seven, but they're not looking too good. They were sellers at the deadline as well. So, Scotty, what are we looking for in this game, or what should we expect in this game? I guess is the better question. Um, I, I mean, I, this is a very winnable game. I, I'd like to win a hockey game here. This is uh, this is super <laughs> winnable. Uh, grab a grab a dub on the road. I, I think that that would be 
uh, really nice. I mean, yeah, th- this is a, a, a team that, as you said, is definitely, uh, definitely was sellers at the deadline, but the biggest reason for their success, kind of similar to some of the other points in their history where they've had uh, success is uh, they've been really good between the pipes this year. They've been oh, really good so goaltending. Good. And so uh, that's, you know, we, we've been bitten by that a few times <laughs> this season, right? We've, we've certainly had our fair share of games where we feel like we uh, have, you know, look, the, the wings look really good. And they're out playing some, you know, the beginning of that Blackhawks game, even we're like, Oh my goodness, what is happening? <laughs> like we're out playing them and it's, we're not getting a lead. So yeah, I think that's, that's really the biggest thing for me. Like this, isn't a very prolific offense at this point. Honestly, I, th- I think the Wings actually have uh, a better offense than Nashville this season. This isn't uh, a-, a defense that doesn't allow a-, a ton of shots or anything, but just very, very good goaltending, and um, that will probably be the storyline of this game if uh, if Huso starts for us too. is just going to be kind of a, uh, a battle in that. Yeah, I mean, I think absolutely to what you said, this is a, absolutely a winnable game. Like, uh, I almost said absolutely, and like you said again, Jesus, Brian, get it together. But between the pipes, they have been very good. UC Soros has a two, 917 save percentage in 49 games played. Their backup, Kevin Lankinen, has a 925 save percentage yeah. in 15 games played. A, a, granted, a smaller sample size, but that's still very impressive for a backup. I mean, that's a really good one and two combo, one and two punch for the Nashville Predators and they're not coming off a back to back or anything. So I would expect to see Soros again, you know, in my opinion, there's three guys who should be your Vesna finalists. And right now that's UC Soros, Linus Ulmark and Ilya Sorokin. Those yeah. three guys have been unreal this season. And it's just, it's kind of a shame that Soros and Sorokin are getting overlooked in my opinion, just based on what, uh, Linus Allmark's done with the Boston Bruins because the Bruins have been so dominant. <laughs> Saros has been so damn good. Tough to go up against a team that literally <laughs> in, fact, in the middle I, of March has 10 losses. Yeah. I don't know what's going to happen. In a few years, you're going to be looking at a, a situation where the Predators are going to be probably moving either. If Askarov is exactly what they think he is, the guy they drafted in like what, the first round? I remember doing a player profile on Askarov with Nolan two years ago. Yeah. Um, th- that, yeah, he, incredibly highly regarded uh, Russian goalie prospect that everybody is still very high on just as they were going into the draft. Yeah. So if he is what they think he is and UC Soros continues to have this level of play, I'd keep an eye on the Nashville Predators goalie situation. If Seabass doesn't come along and be the guy that you want him to be, because you could, you could get a guy from the Nashville Predators that's relatively young. If, if it's UC Soros, still relatively young, that's playing out of his mind, find a bad Nashville Predators team. Now, granted, the Nashville Predators are helped out by the fact that they do have Roman Yossi on their back end. And, you know, he's right. more of an offensive style defenseman, 58 points in 64 games played. But I mean, outside of that, especially after they've sold off so much, you know, they're going down the line. Matthew Sheen's got, he's had a nice season, 51 points, 63 games, Philip Forsberg. Uh, 42 points in 50 games played, and Michael Granlund, 36 points in 58 games played. But that's it. Those are the only four players over 30 points this season. Yeah. Offensively, this is a beatable team. Very. These yeah, guys- I mean, like I said, I, I think it's really gonna gonna start and end with uh, with goaltending, maybe for both teams. <laughs> and like I'm looking at other guys that are listed here on the roster on ESPN, and like I, I'm pretty sure Ekholm got traded away. We know Tanner Giroux, Tanner Jano got traded away for right. a whole. I think didn't Dante Fabro get dealt as well. So like other guys on the roster that were mainstay depth pieces are gone. I mean, Mateus Ekholm was a defensive stalwart back there for them and he's out of there. So this is a weaker team, much like the Red Wings are to their credit, but again, winnable game offensively. They don't, they produce less than you. They just have really good goaltending. And if they if you just beat their goalies, then I see why no reason why Red Wings should not win this hockey game. Couldn't agree more. Let's see where they rank currently. And Corsi, four percentage for shot attempts as well. They're 22nd, and the Red Wings are 28th. Red Wings have been 28th pretty much all, all season long. Uh, that has not really budged a whole yeah. lot. And the National Predators are 16th in the league in goals, four percentage. So just, you know, the percentage of goals, four versus goals given up. They're right in dead center in the league. I think the defense has a lot to do with that. I'm, I'm going to look at, hope I don't eat my words here. If I do, I'm just not going to say it. Oh, wow. Never mind. Their defense, 
So they do get their 27th in the league in goals against, which is worse than the Red Wings. So that's interesting. Hmm. Well, it's going to take a bigger brain than me to get into delve into that one. Probably <laughs> if you, if you want to, if you want to find out why Nashville predators, despite having two goalies with killer save percentages have some of the worst goals against in the league. Oh, never mind. I had it sorted the wrong way. Oh, I'm an idiot. Uh, you know what? I'm not, I'm leaving that. I'm going to let the listeners listen to my foibles. I had it sorted the wrong way. So they have the seventh best goals against in the league mm. because I, I had it sorted by most. Sense, I'm going to be honest with you. It does. It makes a lot more sense because when I looked at that the first time, I was like, how does that work? I was like, going to be like, go listen to lockdown predators, which you should still do. Um, Great show. Now I feel better. I feel worse because I'm stupid. I had it well, sorted the wrong way, but I feel better all the time, though. in that the numbers match. All right, Scotty, let's go to FanDuel and figure out what the odds are for this hockey game. I didn't have it already pulled up, so the people are going to have to deal with me. You know, Red Wings are a hockey team. They play sports. Red Wings, they play hockey. All right, uh, so the Red Wings are plus 126 dogs on the road, money line. Nashville Predators minus 152 home favorites. Would you take either of these? I think I would take the wings. I'm not going to lie. I really like Red Wings plus 126 in Nashville. Yeah. I, I would be hammering the crap out of that. Uh, Red Wings are minus 192 to keep it within a goal and a half. And Nashville Predators are plus 158 to win it by a goal and a half. Yeah, I would probably just not touch that. That's I wouldn't touch that. Very, yeah, almost minus 200. That's probably not worth throwing money on. But, yeah, I mean, that that makes sense. Makes sense that they're a slight dog, but are a heavy favorite to do that. Yeah, I'm gonna. you should never bet on your own team. That's like tends to be like because you have I a home bias. Do it, yeah. But oof, I might I might break that rule tomorrow because that plus 126 <laughs> is really attractive. Over-under set to this. Can this you game. not so that we actually win? You're right. I'm going to bet on the Predators then. <laughs> there you go. Uh, over under set to five and a half. Minus 132 is the five and over. a half. Yeah. Plus 108 is the under. That's how little both these teams score. Wow. Yeah. I'd take the over on that one. Um, I would. But it, it also, it, it like totally makes sense. It does. No. When you look at that, considering the fact that they have the seventh least amount of goals against in the game now that there I've sorted go. that. I've nice sorted so far this season. Yeah, so, you know, gosh. <laughs> stats. It's a good thing that we focus on having fun here. Yes. Yes. Any final thoughts, Scotty? We ball. All right. We'll be back with a new episode tomorrow, breaking down this hopefully win over the Nashville Predators. Um, so stay tuned. Same time, same place. It's your team every day. Every day.